everybody and welcome to the paranormal guys i hope everybody's having a great night and ready for a great show we've got some special guests lined up here tonight and we're gonna as soon as i figure out what all buttons to push we're gonna have a great show and let me take care of some business first we are live on yergsradio.com and rainbow radio so you can call us thanks to their toll-free number at one 888 yergz on your phone pad our 1-844-GAY-LGBT on your phone pad. I want to thank the Pair Our Post Network for allowing us use, to, use of their pages as well. All right. Well, let's see who we got hiding back here. We got Miss Amanda. How are you? Good. How are you today? I'm doing great. Um, yeah. Let's see. And we have a great guest. She's a friend of yours. Her name is Shay. And she's going to uh, tell us. Well, why don't you tell us about her? <laughs> so tell you about my friend Shay. I think we should let Shay tell us about her. She is into all kinds of stuff. She's amazing at what she does. Um, I've known her for quite a few years now. <laughs> Gosh, about Ooh. seven years, seven, eight years. Yeah, I, guess. I think maybe so. longer. <laughs> maybe I don't. <laughs> yes, it's been a while. Yes. So tell us about all the wonderful things you do. Oh, okay. Well, hi. <laughs> um, so I am a psychic medium. Uh, I'm also an intuitive artist, um, paranormal investigator, um, into all things spooky, creepy, weird, or unusual, pretty much. <laughs> so that's a little bit of what I do to sum it up. Hence why we're friends. Yes. <laughs> That is why we met, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we first met at Scarefest. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, long time I ago. Can't it's been that many years ago, but yes. Yeah, long time. <laughs> and I don't I love volunteering. Scarefest any left. <laughs> you what? I don't love Scarefest any less than I did when I first started going. Oh, I think. yeah, I know. It just... And they bring back the same people each year and we still go. It, it's very true. There are some new ones, but no, I mean, it's like yeah. coming to a big family. Yes. Yeah. You go and you just visit and reunite with everyone you've known all this time. Yep. Is that up near you all? Or? Mm -hmm. It's in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, I think they've moved it to the first weekend of October. I think it's October, the, the weekend of the 19th this year. Oh, okay. They've moved it several times over the yeah. years. So, yeah. And they have like horror guests. Like this year, I think they have a lot of people from Scream. I saw Jamie Kennedy is going mm -hmm. to be there along with Matthew Lillard and Skeet Ulrich. Yes. Um, I know. They're my favorites. <laughs> I've already met Matthew and Skeet. So, I'll have to go meet Jamie Kennedy now. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Yes. So will you be at Scarefest? Like at a booth? I am still debating on that. I, um, if I do, I will be a speaker this year. I believe I'll be opening up the speaker list on Friday and I will have a booth and be doing some readings, but I'm making sure the dates work because October is a very busy month for me. It's like pretty much yeah. all my family was born in October. So there's <laughs> a lot of stuff. <laughs> mm hmm. Yes, yeah. last year, I think we were trying to, or sometime last year, I think we were trying to get together in Frankfurt at something you were doing, and we just couldn't make it work. I haven't seen you in, in person in a long time. Yeah, I was doing the readings during the witches' night. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is, 
We have a lot of fun here, Glenn. You would love it in Kentucky. <laughs> yes. In Atlanta, there's not a lot of scary stuff, just scary people. So Right. I know we went to Atlanta one weekend and I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go back home. <laughs> I, I do have to say Atlanta has one of my favorite places I've investigated, though. Um, Rotal. Oh, yeah. um, okay. Rotal is right downtown in Atlanta. It actually is. It's a historic older home. Um, it's old by the State Preservation Trust or something like that now. But it's it was gorgeous. I used to go there at least at least once a year. Um, mm. it's, be it's a beautiful house. If you ever get a chance to tour it, I, I highly recommend. It's got a good history. That's okay. really cool. What's the yeah, most haunted place you've ever that. investigated? Oh my gosh, most haunted? <laughs> See, that's hard because, <laughs> you know, a lot of times, some of the most haunted stuff I think I've ever seen in my life is not big, well-known places. It's um, been things that are local to me or houses I've been to. Um, I think some of the places I've gotten some of the most activity though, I think Thomas house in red boiling Springs, Tennessee is probably one of the places I've gotten the most activity. It's probably one I've been to the most. Um, used to kind of be in my home away from home. I swear mm -hmm. I was there like once a month, uh, sometimes twice a month just to hang out. Um, but there's, there are a lot of different layers to that building, a lot of different levels of history of things that you will get to interact with and or see. Um, man, that's gotta be probably the one I've had the most interaction with. Um, yeah. St. Albans Asylum in Radford, Virginia is also one that I have never been able to get out of my head. It's one of the only places that I've ever been, um, I, I'll attacked. I was kind of letting my guard down for a little bit. Um, and I don't yeah. let that happen often, but there's even pictures. Uh, I truly genuinely upset and pissed off a spirit there that I was calling out on their BS that I was like, no, nah, history's wrong. This is what really happened. And they got very angry that I was airing their dirty laundry and they came up and slapped right below my neck and then scratched like there's the picture is like oh. a huge handprint and you can see oh i was instantly angry i wasn't scared i was livid so <clears throat> the uh, recordings and evps had a lot of fruitful language right after that so <laughs> <laughs> yeah you are the spirit witch <laughs> it's a it, it's a it's an interesting place it's a, it's very it's creepy yeah is that the only time you've ever been touched by anything? I'm not touched, attacked. There's a massive difference. So, sure. sure. Right. No, I, I, um, no, I get touched quite a bit. Like when we're doing things, um, hair pulling or people messing with clothing, especially if you have like strings on a hoodie and stuff like that. Um, Trying to think of, I mean, I've been to so many different places. Waverly was really cool. Not gonna lie, we, Waverly was a bucket list. We talked list about Waverly um, last week. We talked about Waverly. Oh, okay. And yeah, we have a couple of ladies wanting to come and go to Waverly. Uh, Cindy was really sweet. She's awesome. She was yeah. from. She's from Tennessee, isn't she, Glenn? Yeah, yeah, just above yeah. Chattanooga, I think, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she's close to Old South Pittsburgh then. She, I forget what was the name of the hospital, uh, Old Fayette Hospital. She is pretty much the curator of it. Oh, that's very cool. Um, I feel like a lot of things I do and a lot of the friends I have that are in the paranormal with me are from Tennessee. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally, me my too. little friend group. Yeah. Um, I'm from Maxwell, um, so, yeah. Old South Pittsburgh, though, was that was a really cool experience. I went there for the first time this year. Um, had some super interesting things, very interactive, um, extremely intelligent haunting in a lot of those areas in that hospital. Um, yeah, she's not too far from that though. It's, it's a little ways past Chattanooga, I think. Okay. Well now some people see them, others hear them. Which, which is it with you or is it a combination? So I kind of have a little of all of it. Um, 
it doesn't always show up in like full 3D sound music kind of effect. Um, sometimes I'll just hear or sometimes I'll see, feel, smell, whatever it is. All the senses you have like here on this side, I can use all of them on the other side, um, which has always been kind of funny. I have some friends that, you know, they don't hear or they don't see or vice versa. And the ones who don't see, I'll... I'll be seeing something. I'll be like, Oh my God, did you see that? And they're like, no, for the hundredth time, I did not see it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm really sorry. I just got really excited, but okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do they normally look like? Do, do they look like us or do they look I mean, like aliens? What do they look like? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, um, it's different for everybody. I sometimes, yes, they look just like us. I've, had conversations with people and then not realize that they weren't people until someone else was like, who are you talking to? Um, sometimes when I go to some places, I get the black and white. It's almost like watching a movie, like a black and white film will play and I can see events that have happened. Um, sometimes they don't look like people. Sometimes they really are just light or shadows or mist. Um, it really, there is no rhyme or reason to it. I can sometimes ask for clarification if I want to get details on what the person looks like or mannerisms or things like that. I can I can ask if they don't show up as a, an actual person for me and they'll let me know. Um, but yeah, I, I never really know what I'm going to get. It's it's always a surprise. Now, is is it possible to say like. Uh... I don't know. You, I'm looking for Bob Dole and find one guy or is it just whoever is random by or how does that work? So you could ask for people. It's when you come to a medium, if people are wanting to speak with somebody past or um, they're just curious, you can ask for them. But I mean, they don't really change too much from the way we are now. So if you didn't want a people when you were here, sometimes <laughs> you don't want a people when you're there. So yeah, you can always ask, and I'm always kind of respectful. I don't ever want to force it when I do, but yeah, you, you can pinpoint people. Okay. Yeah, I've always yeah. wondered because I've had some people say that basically they just like walk into their living room or whatever and they're like, hey, I got a story to tell. So, yes, I've, I've been really good over the years. Um, kind of proof in the house. Um, I don't let it so much be so busy anymore. Uh, that kind of takes a toll on you, especially when it's three o'clock and you wake up and someone's memo is standing there like, Hey, you pass this message along. I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm not doing this. It's three. I'm I got to get up for work. Um, yeah, it's, it's better if you ask, or I'll actually tell them if I'm out somewhere and somebody does appear to me or wants to pass a message along. I'm like, Hey, can you, can you come back around this time or this time or when I'm in this space? Um, it really is no different than talking to like you or me. I, you, you just, you treat them like you would when they were here. So I'm like, you know, if you have enough respect, come back and see me later, make an appointment basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, and are most of them fairly respectful? Yes, to an extent. Um, <laughs> Again, I really think we don't change too much. So if you are a jackass here, you don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't lose that trait about yourself. Um, so, I mean, I've had some people be like, no, this is going to happen right now. Or, you know, I'm going to come in or I'm going to mess with this. And, you know, they kind of find out real fast. I don't really tolerate that from living and or past. So, <laughs> gotcha. yeah. And this started when you were very young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I don't remember a time I didn't see or feel or have something different going on. Um, I think the earliest I remember is my brother and me shared a room when he was a baby and I was little up until about, I was five. There's about two and a half years between me and him. And I remember there was a lady and it happened almost every night. His crib was across from me. My bed was over here on the wall. And she would come and stand at the right side of his crib. I mean, hands on the crib. She wasn't very tall, but just enough to hold on like this. And she was in all black. Um, 
everything about her looked like a shadow except her hair was like a dark gray and i remember seeing that and i remember seeing a few other things in that house the the apartment that we lived in um yeah i didn't find out till i was like in my teens 15 16 that uh uh that that building the apartment we lived in was in an area known to be like a civil war kind of makeshift hospital for some of the raids that had gone on through the town that i live in um so the things i used to see there i used to see people that would walk up in weird uniforms in just all gray would walk and disappear into the wall where the window was above my bed and then later on i was like y'all told me this stuff wasn't real and i was imagining all this but i i clearly <laughs> something happened here so yeah I've, I've always been that kid yeah i interviewed uh uh, Sophia Temporelli, I think her last name is, Ghost Girl. She's out on the West Coast, and she's really young. She told me that uh, her started as a child, too, and this thing basically watched her like a perverted old man until finally, I guess, her parents or somebody realized that, you know, it wasn't in her head, and they they moved. And I think he followed uh, It took a while. And it traumatized her. I mean, she up to like, you know, teenage years. And I was like, I, I never thought about it, but she pointed out, she says, well, if you were a jerk, a creep or whatever here, you're probably going to be that way over there. And I'm like, <laughs> yep. It's like, yeah, it makes sense. And she was the first person I'd ever heard of that had been, I don't want to, I, I will say traumatized because that's the word she used. That's her story. You know, I don't want to embellish it, but uh, wow. Uh, that you know, I grew up in a haunted house, and I, I don't know how we managed to get away from them, but we did. And uh, I'm glad to, and I like to go out and look for Bigfoot things that go bump in the night in my house. I, I want to shoot, so I'm not, I'm not a fan. <laughs> That's fair, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there I could understand the, the trauma aspect of it. There was a what I thought was a reoccurring dream uh, was not. I, I realized I was very much awake. I had that for a very long time, regardless of the house that we lived in. Uh, something very specific. So I 100% I can relate to her. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Do, do you think that these things can... Uh, I don't want to have... How do I word this? I don't want to say read our minds, but no what's occupying our space i guess so i think that would depend on what kind of entity you would be speaking about okay. um yeah there that that could be a, that has a lot of potential depending on what you think you're speaking to or what you're dealing with um yes i mean we've seen that ghosts or spirits can interact and there's other times when they don't, when they're kind of on a loop. Um, and then there's other things that I believe in that I have, haven't experienced everything obviously, but there are quite a few things I've encountered that I had to go find the name for it to figure out what it was. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of things that are very much aware and, and they do know they're, they, they watch us. I mean, that's that's what I think, and that's that's what I've seen. I think oh, wasn't it Cindy Amanda that said last week that she believes that it's our aura that can read our aura of what's like we're a time stamp of what twenty four hours previous and twenty four hours ahead, and that right. they can read that as what she was mm -hmm. talking about. That's what she thinks is that they can see so far into our past and so far into our future based on our aura. Because she had one in a person that she was helping with a problem on the West Coast that was emailing her. And the lady sent her an email with EVPs the night before, and she didn't want to listen to it. So she shut her computer down. And the next morning, when she went and checked her email, and the email was there, and she listened to the EVP, it was about an argument her and her husband had had that morning. <laughs> and it's like okay that now that that really crosses a time space <laughs> barrier that freaks me out a lot right yes that freaked me out too i was like wow yeah i would 
again, I think it depends on what kind of thing you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I do think yeah. there that is a possibility. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's scary. That's scary. Um, when you say beings, I know everybody thinks of ghosts and they think of, you know, your grandma standing over you or, you know, Uncle Tom looking out for you that you never knew. What other kind of, I mean, I know there's bad spirits or demons, whatever you want to call them out there. What, how many do you think there are? Um, hmm, this is a, like this, is a <laughs> this is a science. That means that we are always and forever broadening our uh, ideas and things that we think we know. We never really know the full extent of it. Um, I don't know. You take your pick. How many different religions and beliefs and ancient civilizations and cultures there are? Every single one of them have something different that they call something. Um, I, that's how many I think there are. I think it's an infinite amount. And we are just now to the point in the last 50 to 100 years starting to actually like catalog, write down and keep an accurate like history of things that people have let go, which is why something shows up sometimes, I think. And everyone's like, we have no idea what that is. It's not this, this, this or this. Um, yeah, I'm, an infinite amount. That is what I believe. Okay. Like I said, there's there's things that I've had to like phone a friend and be like, hey, you're into more weirder stuff than me. Can you tell me what you think this is? Because I have an idea. <laughs> so, yeah. That's fair. Um, I had an interesting event happen to me, and I try and ask everybody their opinion of this. Uh, it's happened twice, once sitting here. Um, and I see it out of the corner of my eye. It's a single drop of water. And it will fall and hit my arm, and there's no water pipes above me. I'm in a, I'm in one of my kids' old bedrooms. Um, it would be physically impossible. And I, I even photographed the water. It was ice cold. What the heck could that be? I have. No, it's happened twice now. <laughs> just one singular, and you just catch it out of the corner of your eye, and it'll hit your arm. I would have a lot of questions about what were you doing when this happened? Like, were you, <laughs> were you doing this? Were you like talking or were you zoned out? Well, I spend most of my life zoned out. So that's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for narrowing it down. That helps. Yes. No, it was, pro- I was, I probably, I don't think I was online during a show, but I was probably editing or doing artwork for a show or something. I mean, more than likely it was something show related one of my multiple shows so could be something i have no idea it could be something trying to get your attention and that's the only way it could be if you were like zoned out or kind of like meditating having quiet time or something i'd be like maybe you went somewhere like you were on a different plane or level um i don't know that's really freaky I mean, unless water has a specific meaning to you, um, it could be what side of the body it fell on. If it was on this side, if it was a relative, it's mom. And on this side, it's dad. It's like, I don't know. That's very interesting. Hmm. Okay. Have you ever heard of that before? Not specifically. You are the first. <laughs> well, I am always unique. <laughs> so. You yeah. are, Glenn. Yeah, man. <laughs> My wife tells me all the time. Well, that's not exactly what she was. Or well. if you particularly think that you actually have somebody who specifically watches over you, that is not a relative. That is more, um, more angelic being. There's something connecting you with them, and I think that is a way that they communicate. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've got a weird story about uh, a person that can be seen nearby me that multiple people have seen. And for no apparent reason, um, it's uh, it, it it showed up to multiple people, and he drew a uh, drawing of it. And I've emailed a DJ one of them. They're like, "That's exactly what I saw." I'm like, "I have no idea who it is." So, <laughs> <laughs> so okay, that's weird. Yeah, kind of like insidious with the woman 
behind oh, him and she gets closer and closer. <laughs> oh God, that's. <laughs> that was from the, I don't know what what ear would it be with the top hat and the the nice thin tie and the mustache like me and you know so that it's kind of like that era so and I'm like I have no idea who in the heck that could be so like the twenties <laughs> yeah 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 so so yeah I have no idea who that could be so <laughs> okay got me thinking yeah. I, I will intrigue you, that's for sure. So I'm <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> Glenn, have you ever been to the place in Atlanta she mentioned? No, I'd actually never heard of it. And that surprises yeah. me because I've got a lot of weird friends around here. So Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I I had a few I had some good experiences there. Um basement was weird. Uh <laughs> the basement in the building was very weird. I have a friend who uh, is like super smart, very historically zoned into anything you can think of. Um, and that was one of the first times I met this person and the, I had never, I think this was the first time I'd been there and I went downstairs and they were trying to figure out, you know, is she legit? Is she really, is she really what she says she is? Which I welcome anybody to assume that I don't like people to just automatically believe things. Sometimes I prefer a little skepticism, not that I'm trying to win you over or anything, but I just, I think that's a healthier way to live sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. And I could tell that he was very much like, so what do you pick up from this? And I'm like, all right, well, right off the top of my head, there's this guy over here arguing about this. This is a weird thing. Like here's what's happening. And, um, I just remember I was picking up on, it was almost like a flood coming in all at once. Once I finally decided to like open up Atlanta's got a weird vibe anyways. Like it's an, mm -hmm. it's an odd town. Um, but yeah, I know Rhodes Hall hundred percent. You should definitely go check that out. I don't know if they still do events and stuff there, but I know, like I said, I think the state owns it beautiful, full of history. The person that designed it and built it and stuff, the family that originally lived there, there are still members living in the house we did speak to a few of them <laughs> um yeah 100 percent. love that place it's gorgeous that's cool, cool. <laughs> the best dvp you've ever had mm. personally i mean i i i've gotten a few i've gotten a few good ones some of the best ones i've ever heard though had nothing to do with me whatsoever so um Titanic Museum in uh, Pigeon Forge. Mm -hmm. I have heard some of the best EVPs there. Literally. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Pigeon Forge. Um, my friend Mike um, was doing his session in the third class area and they got one that literally has a little girl talking about exactly what they were doing. I mean, it's the clearest just spot on, super interactive. Um, some of the other best ones I've gotten. Rosemont in Tennessee. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been there, know about it. Um, it's an old, of course, it's another old um, plantation home kind of setting, Civil War era. Um, I was, first of all, I'm a woman who's speaking and doing things that women normally didn't do, which tends to be something that happens in a lot of the places that I end up going to. You're a woman. I've been called a witch on <laughs> EVPs and spirit boxes. I've played stuff back. I've been cussed out. And the EVP that I got <laughs> at Rosemont <laughs> um, was literally someone basically telling me to like F off. Like it was nothing but just cussing me out. Um, Another one of the best ones was getting yelled at by prostitutes in a place here in Lexington. I was investigating. What? <laughs> yes. The place had been used. Um, it was a hotel at one point. This was the Carnegie Library. No, no, no. This was what used to be. Yeah. What used to be the Phoenix Hotel. Um, I might be wrong, but it used to be the Phoenix Hotel in downtown Lexington. And this was one of the first like out loud things I had done with like a group of people that I had been in charge of taking around and doing all my things with. Um, actually, this was the one I did with Steve Deshavi. This was the first time I worked. He, I worked with Steve Deshavi from the Dead Falls. Um, he was doing his thing on a different level. 
we were on a different level. And I was like, so um, there's this group of women over here that keep yelling at me and they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm pretty sure they're prostitutes or women of the night. Like, <laughs> so we started an EVP session and they basically were said, stop it. Don't look, get out. Um, and the whole point of it was I was ruining business. I was bad for business. <laughs> so something about me, like seeing them and their customers were not going to come to them that night because I had a group of people in there in the middle of the night. Like, what are we doing? This is their busy time. So yeah, that one, that one, I won't ever forget that one. That was my first like public event that I did. And it, yeah. Killed at my prostitutes. So, so ghosts hilarious. still getting it on in the next realm. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, I wasn't going to look, but it was just, it was a very weird night. Yeah, I would have been that guy. I'd have been like, oh, no, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> we got to see this. <laughs> That's the paramedic in me. I'd be like, no, no, no. Hold on. The <laughs> I best things that this. happen when you're investigating sometimes are not the scariest. It is the funniest ones. That is when stuff <laughs> gets interesting. Yeah, yeah, the same with big footing. Yeah, exact same thing. So you're out there <laughs> intensely looking for him. You go back to camp, and then a rock hits you in the back of the head out of nowhere, and you're like, "Where the hell were you 20 minutes ago?" <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So yeah, uh, it's it's the way it is. Well, speaking of that, do you believe in Bigfoot and things like that? I do. I think I think there's a lot of possibilities for things. Um, I live in a pretty pre heavily forested area. The National, the Daniel Boone Forest is right where I live in the Red River Gorge. And there's a lot of weird things. I've got family from Eastern Kentucky, you know, Appalachia. There's, there's things. There are definitely things that uh, I don't think we have all found yet. So I'm up, I'm, I'm there for the Bigfoot. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing we found out in the woods. We went looking for a big hairy ape and we found there's more to the big hairy monkey but there's a whole lot of things out in the woods, things you just don't expect out in the woods. <laughs> yes. I, there are a few rules I live by when I, if I'm ever out like that, like I grew up in the country and like I said, I've got family from Eastern Kentucky. There's things you just don't do in the woods. So mm -hmm. true. true. Very true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, we've went out and we'd had ev had everything from ET to, you know, ghosts, paranormal things we can't even explain. We had a woman in black find us, which was she found me, which is the weirdest. Um, so yeah, everything weird has happened out in the woods, and it's just unbelievable to me because people are like, "Oh, you go camping and you're out there in the woods, have a good time." And I'm like, <laughs> "You have no idea what's around you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've thought that before when I've been camping. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, should I care right now or should I just make my s'mores and go on with my night? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are, there's a time and place where you want to see things and, and when you don't. So, <laughs> that is very true. Yeah. Like, like I said, I would prefer being out in the woods looking for it than have something in my home. But, uh, you know, even doing this show, um, I don't know, a couple months ago, something was pulling my hair and I asked the guest, I was like, do you, do you know what this is? And she's like, yeah. I was like, could you tell to stop? <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> so yeah. Do you see things around people and you want to tell them, but you don't know how? Y yes. Um, not so much of a don't know how to tell them. I just, I'm really careful because you never know what could be a trigger for something. And I would hate to do something or say something to someone and it sets them off good or bad. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just, that's one of my things I'm very respectful for. I work in the medical field. Um, so coming in contact with all the patients and working in hospitals, um, it is really hard sometimes to not let it slip or say something that kind of, gives it away. Um, I've had that happen a few times. Been talking to a patient, I'll mention something and they're like, that's really odd. What makes you say that? I'm like, it's in your chart. No one can, well, there ain't nothing in that chart like that, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things I'd like to say to people, especially when it comes to, again, what I do with their health, even if 
like I don't typically do health readings so it's really hard when I do know stuff and I can't say anything because it's not right. medical so yeah. it makes it difficult that yeah, would. Was a paramedic who uh, after a traumatic brain injury he could see uh, dead people and when we would be going on calls and stuff, he's like, well, it's too late. What the hell are you talking? It's too late. And uh, finally, it got to the point it drove, I want to say drove him crazy. That's not the right word. But it bothered him enough and people working with him, do they put him in training? So, <laughs> so Dang. That's yeah. terrible, though. Yeah, yeah, because uh, literally we'd be pulling up on a car wreck and be like, yeah, there's nothing we can do here. Like, we haven't even parked the ambulance jet <laughs> so. it's maddening it it really is if you i don't want to say it's easier if you've grown up with it but i kind of want to say it is like you you've learned how to either deal with it or not deal with it or you don't mess with it like i can't imagine just having it thrust on you all at once like that seems like a lot especially if you don't have a a mentor or like a group support or something like that i, I think he ended up going and um, he actually watches the show occasionally. Um, he's retired now. I think he ended up going and talking to some people and getting some, I don't a guidance counselor or something. I don't know the right word, but, um, and it's helped now that he's out in the field. So, but yeah, I, I don't know that things don't still come around, but I don't really communicate with him that often anymore. So, but yeah, that, it, I can't imagine it would be maddening. You know, and well, and being in the medical field, this is always one thing that I've always wondered. We've run these calls with people who are sick, or maybe their level of consciousness is different than ours, and they say, "Oh, I see things or I hear things." Do they? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're always quick to say they're mentally impaired or they're crazy or whatever, but I mean, you know, a hundred years ago. I would have been committed. Uh, <laughs> like they straight up would have been like, she's hysterical. And my family could have stuck me somewhere. And I would have been in all these horrible types of treatments 300 years ago. I could have been burned at the stake. Like there's, I think it, it's a very fine line um, when it's psychosis versus like actual something yes. paranormal is happening. Um Honestly, though, I, I mean, if they're seeing something that makes them happy, who are we to tell them, hey, that's not real? Unless it's something that's going to damage them or hurtful to them in the future. But I've I've seen my fair share of things with people passing or really close. Um, and a lot of times, if you are mentally on a different level, if your brain waves are not functioning like they should at whatever age you're at, unless you're like a child. I mean, there's some research that shows you can tap into different things you are seeing on a different wavelength than other people are. So, yeah, I I honestly believe they are seeing things sometimes, especially yeah, people agree. close to the end or at that moment. Yeah, I agree. We touched in a little bit of quantum mechanics there, whether you meant to or not. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I research things sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a, a book out by Ron Moorhead. He talks about Bigfoot being able to basically be at a, I don't want to say frequency, but a different level than us. And that it, it's there and we just can't see it. And it, it's a pretty eye-opening book once you once you start opening your mind to, you know, not just that there's things out there we don't understand, but that now we can prove scientifically and mathematically that that exists. Yeah. When you start talking about frequencies and stuff like that, there's, there's so much more involved with it. And I'm, I'm learning every day. So, uh, I mean, I use different, a lot of us use, especially even, um, People who are investigating different researchers will play different frequencies. You can get different responses from the body. Different like stimulus um, can mm -hmm. put you in a different frame of mind. Um, yeah, I've done a few. I don't know. I, I guess you would call them seances. I'm not really sure. Just 
some things I've conducted with different sounds, different lights and stuff like that. It, do, it does make a difference. It can make it easier to kind of communicate or for things to come forward. I've, I've definitely seen that. What all tricks do you have in your tool bag? I can't tell you all of them. <laughs> um, all right. Give me two. How about that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that, so I've used different frequencies. I've played different sounds, um, kind of just like when people try to meditate and stuff too, you'll put on a certain music or water in the background, whatever it might be. Um, I think lighting, red lights, I know that was, looks like every other psychic you've ever seen in a movie or anything else with the cool red lighting going on. It just look creepier. Um, I had an experience when I was in England in March, we were at a old workhouse in Ripon. Um, and my friend Nikki, who was another investigator, she was on the other side of this table that all of us were sitting down in this room. I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. So she had this red light and she got it out and I hadn't really done too much with that kind of lighting but it does allow your eyes to kind of unfocus a little bit more and um, not just sets the mood too. But I was just channeling to the point where people started freaking out, like across the table and beside me and stuff. And I, I'm, I'm not, I have no idea what's happening to my face. They're like, you don't look like you. Uh, they were seeing each person I was channeling physically take shape mm -hmm. in my face. And I have photos that my friend was taking too. And my eyes aren't my eyes, but they are. It's a weird, it was weird. It was one of the weirdest things I've experienced. That was my first time in the UK. Um, whole different vibe over there when you're investigating too. There's a whole, there's a lot more different things. Um, so I, the light was cool. I've used it a few other times by myself here at home just to see if it could help me kind of, uh, again, kind of unfocus my eyes, kind of get in a different state of mind. Um, yeah, that that one was really cool. And I mean, it was it was a long time too. It wasn't just like a, a second. This went over a, a matter of like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, wow. Yeah, it was really it was really neat. It was probably the coolest part of the night. Did you have any track of time during that or do you know you, you see you kind of don't even remember it? No, I don't remember. I couldn't tell you anything I said. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you exactly who, who it was. I mean, I was saying it, but no, for me, it felt like I was doing it for just a second. So yeah, wow. it was weird. The pictures were weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know, being an optician, we use different color lenses um, within vision therapy, like the red tint is for migraines, a blue tint is calming. So do you think like if you try the different light, it would have a different reaction? I think so. There's something I do when I'm doing energy work on somebody. I, I don't know what else to call it. I call it color therapy, color energy work. Cause that's, that's why I do my drawings. That's why I do that as part of my readings, because that is how I see things first and foremost is in color. That's how I see somebody, even buildings. Um, and I will choose the color that feels like it corresponds with whatever they need. So, yeah, I, th I think if, oh, that would be, this could be a fun experiment. <laughs> I have an idea. Um, yeah, I think that if you set the tone, set the mood, I mean, like you said, people already associate colors with feelings and emotions or certain words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you were to play around with that, there would be different responses. I think so, too. Have you ever wanted to do one uh, electronically, like with people in different locations, kind of like this? Um, yeah, I actually love doing that kind of thing. I've done, like, remote viewing and stuff like that before where I've hopped in and not even had a video and just been on the phone with someone and be like, hey, what are you getting and go in and I don't, don't ask me how we do it. We just do, we just, we can just be there. <laughs> and yeah. Oh, I would love to do that. That would be fun. Yeah, we should uh, not live of course, but right? uh, <laughs> set up something sometime I, just as an experiment. So that would I be would cool. definitely be down for that. Yeah. 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 We'll have to figure out how to do this. Uh, Cause I think, you know, 
<laughs> I have a guest room, Shay. We can do the lights out here on the farm in the dark. Ha ha. Yes. <laughs> now I'm going to make my intent known that Bigfoot's going to appear. So <laughs> It is called happens. Squatch River Farm. <laughs> I mean, if, if Bigfoot was to show up, I swear, I think I would just be like, well, man, how are you? Like, I don't think I'd panic. I think I would just have a moment like I knew it all along. <laughs> He knocked over a few trees last night. I have pictures. What? <laughs> yeah. Y'all got sticking in Bigfoot roots. country. Yeah, that this morning, a whole just set of trees knocked over. <laughs> I'll be there in 48 hours. I want to see And this. she wants me to come play in the dark with her. Doesn't that sound yeah. safe? <laughs> it's <laughs> really neat because the lightning bugs get in the trees and it's like your own light show out here on the river. It's really I didn't realize neat. you live that close to the water. There the are a lot right of factors we could use for this. Oh, and yeah. Water has a lot of things, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, it does. Yeah. 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 She, have you ever been published? <laughs> have you written a book? Have you? You need to. <sighs> no, I have not. Um, I have had several people over the years tell me that I should. Um, I've <laughs> had a, I have a couple in mind there's one that i've kind of started and messed with over the years but i never have made the time for it it's hard to do it's hard to do yeah, yeah i would i would love to childhood i yeah. would love to i think that would be fun yeah. whether or not people would read it is a whole different thing but i would read it <laughs> <laughs> you know That's i love you though shay <laughs> yeah. it's like my show i've got two fans so you know <laughs> Hey, you've got me, Glenn. You you interviewed me, and now. I just stayed. That's right. That's right. Well, I have a feeling we're going to have Shay on often too. So, <laughs> oh, I would love to. Yeah, I mean, because I, I do the Bigfoot thing, and I do remote viewing. Except I do mine more. Um, I was trained by somebody that worked for a three-letter agency, so I do it more mathematically. I can give it a target, and then I can go to it. I can't give myself like go to the battle of antietam or whatever yeah i can't do that i don't think but <laughs> i've never tried i don't know that i want to but uh yeah i'm always fascinated by things like that and i'm fascinated by the bigfoot and here recently with all the um revelations by our government that there's ets or they're not called they're ua uaps now right so or not underwater whatever it is ufos yeah you know, so yeah it's and that fascinates me because i don't know that i don't know necessarily that they're from another planet maybe another dimension they're us from the future maybe i i don't know and it just fascinates me have you got any experience with et um just one uh I have always thought there were other things. I mean, it's a big universe, from, or at least that's what we've been told. So I uh, was at the Battleship North Carolina, the USS North Carolina um, in Wilmington, and it was after an investigation. Um, and I swear there's only been a few handful of these people in the world that I have ever trusted that what they say is that's it that's concrete my grandfather was one of them and in his in his bible even that i have there is written a couple of dates where he saw a ship him and his brother and him by himself where they lived at in sawyersville mcgoffin county in west liberty um if you look it up on a map it is one of the hot spots across our state that's known for having weird things happen like that so I'm like, yeah, they exist. Um, leaving the battleship that night after investigation, it was 1.15. Had my friend Christy with me. She is also a psychic. Um, and, you know, what do you do when you leave an investigation at 1.15? You're hungry. We go look for a Taco Bell. What else do you do, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that was our mission. Our mission was to go to Taco Bell, get food, and then go meet everybody else at the house that we were all staying at. Um so we're in the car with us. Everybody else had already left, went back to the house. They went this way. We were going to go this way. We're driving up the road that you have to take in order to get to the ship. Um, we get to the end of the road. And 
we're like, okay, so let's pull up the directions for Taco Bell on the phone. So we're using my map, trying to figure out, are they open? Sure. All of a sudden, in the middle of us talking about this, there was, I don't even know how to explain it. It was a flash, but there was no noise. It was the brightest light I've ever seen. And when I saw whatever it was, whatever the shape was, it was a very strange shape. It, it almost reminded me of a Christmas ornament shape. Um, and the only thing I can describe the color on the inside, it, the, the closest thing I can think of is welding sparks, that blue, white, intensely mm -hmm. hot light is what it looked like. We saw it. We both looked up at the same time. Everything in the car and everything on our bodies. I don't know. The hair was standing up on our arms. Everything felt like if I touched it, it would shock me. Um, it was weird. It was there. And then it was gone. Like it just poof. I don't know. Almost like it just disappeared. And me and her just sat there for a minute. And we kind of looked at each other and we we're like, what the hell was that? And I don't know. We were like trying to wrap our brain. Was it a firework? Was it a, a ship? Was it an airplane? Like, I know we're close to like, there's a naval base or like an army base or something really close by in Wilmington. So I'm like, maybe they're testing some crap or something who I don't, I don't know. But we, we tried to drive to go see whether it was our smoke trail. Like we really put our investigating brains immediately into action and the next thing I know, we went and turned down the opposite way we we're supposed to go. And then we couldn't see anything and I turned around. But when I turned around, the clock was not at 120 or 115. It was 210 in the morning. I don't know. Neither one of us knows. I wasn't driving that long. We have no idea what happened. So there's like a whole time that we don't account for, that we have no idea. To this day, if I called her up right now, she will tell you the exact same thing. We have no idea how we lost time. And it tripped me out more the fact that I don't know what was happening for 45 minutes. So, and first of all, our friends never called to ask us if we were okay. I would just like to point that out, that they were at home partying already. Nobody I was just thinking, we there, there went Taco Bell. You missed out on Taco uh, Bell. We did. We did. We got there, and they closed the window in our faces. So oh not only, God. yes, not only was I missing time, but now I don't get tacos on top of it. So yeah. we settled for McDonald's. But Damn it, ET. <laughs> right. So, but I literally have no idea what happened in that time span, I swear to you, all we did was turn around and drive. It was weird. We felt weird. We were still looking at our arms. We still had chill bumps. Like it was, I can't explain that. Messes with me to this day. And that was probably two or three years ago. So. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I've had something similar. So mm -hmm. yeah, That's we were out crazy. camping and a friend was going down a fire road and he was going to make sure it wasn't blocked off. We were going to use the campsite at the bottom of the fire road. I'm parked at the top of the fire road with my wheels turned to the right to go down the road. And he's on the radio. He's like, nah, let me go down there. So we both, have to both don't have to turn around if it's not open. Like, okay, cool. Radio's back. Tells me it's open. Come on down. Literally a football field down a hill fire road for no apparent reason. I went straight for 45 minutes. <laughs> And I have, I have no idea why. I have no idea how. And when I came to my senses, I'm like, where the hell am I? And I stopped. I looked at my GPS. And I'm like, I'm nowhere near where the hell I'm supposed to be. What the hell? And so I turn around and I start, I go back. And I thought, I'm just around the corner. No, I was like 25 minutes further into the forest. So, yeah. yeah. They, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that was uh, the funny, well, I shouldn't say funny, but weird thing. Uh, I had one of the old uh, Garmin's that would tell you, you know, at the end of when you reset it for your gas tank, it would tell you how many miles, your top speed, blah, blah, blah. My top speed was like 199 miles an hour or something. It was some ungodly. I got a picture of it somewhere. And, uh, <laughs> there's no way that that old Jeep would have done 100, much less 200. Okay. 
<laughs> so yeah, yeah, my friends are like, yeah, you got picked up. There's no way around. Yeah. So I had a couple yeah. friends that were kind of joking about that, and I was like laughing too. But now the more I think about it, the <laughs> I'm like, hmm, mm, okay, well, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the time thing is what kills me. I don't. I, yeah, I that's don't, weird. I don't. I don't know. It's that a feeling of you out of control. And that's the worst part. Yeah, I don't do well with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's a very weird thing when you feel like you were present and you weren't present. <laughs> so, it's yeah, yeah. As a paramedic, I like to be in control of everything. It, it doesn't always work that way. I'm a mom and, and I'm in nursing. Like control is kind of like in our description. So, um, yeah. You get it. Right. You get my the, I get it. It freaks me out a little bit. Sure. Well, Shay, but I don't had know some that, Shay. Night. I was going to ask you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <Go ahead>. Glenn. <laughs> no, I was going to say I don't want to keep her here all night. And I was going to ask her if she's got yeah. anything coming up or anything. Oh, yeah. Uh, on her agenda or um let me see what are we in this year's kind of flying by july <laughs> um probably going to be doing um i'm gonna say i'm probably gonna say it wrong mystical market in lexington uh, i think i'm gonna try and get in on august for that one i don't remember the dates but i will have everything posted on my socials um going to be doing some more lives i've been doing going on live and just doing like a one card draw for people who hop on and want one for free no charge nothing like that i just really enjoy doing those um kind of a chance for me to i don't know help somebody out who might not be willing to always ask for the help sometimes so you never know what you can get from that um i think the next investigation for sure that i'm going to be doing is in august i'm going to be going to the jefferson um with the tennessee ray chasers be hanging out there with them that weekend in texas so it's going to be a thousand degrees um (laughs) literally that's what it feels like in texas in the summer i've decided so um yeah i don't know i'm working on a few things right now that i'm trying to set up a few events for kind of just me and a very small group of people i'll be posting more details on that i'm trying to set some things up here in kentucky some places oh, nice. that people don't know about yet. Um, some things I've learned from family members in Eastern Kentucky. So I have things in the works. I took a little nice. time off to kind of focus on um, some family stuff and kind of like myself for the summer. So yeah. get back into it in the fall. Yeah. So Facebook, Shay Smith. I do have uh, just a me page if people want to follow. Also, I have Shay Smith. Um, my southern psychic medium page as well post stuff on there and i'm on instagram um psychic artist shay okay will you come back on the show i think so yeah i think i've had fun we weren't weren't that mean it was amanda it was me not me i was the good (laughs) oh no so (laughs) yes i would love to come back okay cool I'm going to shoot you a message because uh, I got some questions about something uh, that I don't want to put out over the air. So I'll okay. ask you about that if you don't care. You can look at in your inner eye or whatever it is you do. <laughs> okay. Tell me I'm crazy. You wouldn't be the first. Shay, have a wonderful night. I appreciate you coming in and spending an hour Thank with Thank you. Me. Thank you guys so much. All right. Yes. We will see you Thank soon. You. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. She was amazing. You get some cool friends. I love Shay. Yes. <laughs> she was amazing. All right. Let me push a button here real quick. And then our next guest is already backstage. So hold on one second here. Hi, Rich Fields here. And come on down. It's time for the Sport Cat Show. I always do that for my executive producer to make it easier for her. So, <laughs> or technically me. So, okay, well, <laughs> if you only knew.
let's see. Uh, our next guest is backstage, so I don't want to keep her waiting. Uh, she's an author, and well, you know what? I'm just gonna let her tell us about herself. How about that? That way, I don't screw it up like I usually do. Hello, Stephanie. How are you? Hi. How are you? Doing great. Uh, I'm Glenn Sport Cat, and this is Amanda. Hi, she's Amanda. Hello. Her little sidekick for tonight. Uh, <laughs> We were uh, looking forward to your interview because you got a great story. So I'm going to let you tell us about yourself and then we'll just wing it from there. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. We're pretty, we're pretty easy. So. <laughs> okay. oh, so about myself. Oh, gee, what can I tell you? Um, I'm dyslexic. So I, I say it's kind of ironic because I love writing, but I'm dyslexic and I have a hard time reading and writing but I love it and I have such a passion for it um I don't look it but I'm half Spanish um my dad's from Guatemala um I grew up in a tiny little town <laughs> um and I actually got to meet my uh significant other uh from Australia so my husband's from Australia it's pretty cool um yeah I don't know what else I can tell you about myself <laughs> Well, how many books have you published? Uh, so far, I, this is my first one. My second one is coming out in uh, this coming month, August, but that's a children's book. Okay. All right. What's it about? Well, actually, um, tell ta us about both of them. So. Okay. Well, okay. I'll tell you about the one coming out soon. In okay. August 1st, there's a children's book I wrote. It's called A Stony Gaze, and it's kind of a twist or a spin on Medusa and it teaches kids the harms and dangers of gossiping and thinking as a mob rather than as an ind individual and yeah so it's just a twist on Medusa and basically when Medusa looks at people she's not trying to turn them into stone but really if someone's looking at her like an object it just bounces back to them and they become the object so oh, okay nice that's good. That's the children's book. But the one I currently have that we're here to talk about is Land of the Dragon. <laughs> it's a historical fantasy. Um, it's the best description I can tell you is kind of like a blend between kind of like a Narnia and Hunger Games situation. Okay. Nice. So yeah, it takes place in the 1940s in Nazi Germany with the Kuhn family. And uh, things aren't always what they seem. And uh, their family has some secrets. And when they uncover these secrets, uh, they, d they have to kind of, they realize they're making a run for it, um, which ultimately leads them to a whole nother fantasy-like world. Um, and the basic, I guess, theme to Land of the Dragon is that a nation uh, that forgets its identity uh, can easily be manipulated or corrupted. Um, that's kind of the theme. Um, and then another, I guess, theme to it is that uh, power can, can can corrupt even the most ambish, ambitious person. It's very true. When nice. you say it's historical, so you went back and did a lot of research on the era and the time, and on, was it on a specific family or is the family the alternate part well the alternate no it's during the the family lives during the 1940s and in, in nazi germany and it just kind of shares a lot about what it was like to live during that time the fear they went through and if you're you couldn't really voice your true beliefs or thoughts if you're uh i guess back then what was politically correct if you didn't believe that, your family was in danger of being killed even. Yeah. So what that, made you interested in that era? Um, okay, so as a little girl, my next door neighbors were actually, uh, they immigrated to Canada and they were from Nazi Germany. And the man, he actually even was a Nazi. Um, so they told me all these stories when I was growing up. They're, they've passed on since, but... They told me all these war stories and horrible things they had to witness and see. 
And it just made me fascinated as a girl. I was like, wow, like it was almost crazy because, you know, we're uh, privileged enough to not have gone through that um, time that it was it was like a big story to, you know, it was like kind of an adventure to me to listen to these crazy stories and stuff like that. And I was like, what? That's like so yeah. unreal, you know? So that's what right. got me really fascinated into that time period in history. And I just kept researching and finding so much information, things that we weren't even really shared in school because I think they were a little too graphic to be shared mm -hmm. in school. Um, I interviewed as a girl tons of veterans and people that lived at that time, you know, in the war and what it was like living there. I think we forget how amazing we have it compared to, uh, I guess, the past. Yeah, definitely. Those are some interesting stories. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the bigger picture, it wasn't that long ago either, you know? It right. was. Well, and that's yeah. another thing is I think – it wasn't that long ago and it's things that are like, there's so much patterns and in history that we can learn from that society can grow from. And if we're not vigilant in remembering those things, then we're going to repeat them eventually. So that's why I thought, you know, this is very important topic and I'm a huge fantasy fan, right? I love fantasy. I remember being a little girl and playing outside and every time the wind would blow, I'd look up in the sky and be like, oh, it's an invisible dragon. It's flying past. <laughs> you know? So I was just really, really into um, fantasy. I used to watch, you know, the good old classics like the Dark Crystal or the Labyrinth. Mm -hmm and the last unicorn and oh. things like that yes like, i just never ending story. story yeah the never ending <laughs> story so. yes those are some of my favorites too <laughs> so yeah i really wanted to create a really good uh story with fantasy but i also wanted to add a good like purpose behind the story and also um help you know different generations remember the past and and be able to recognize patterns from the past that can easily be repeated even today if we're not careful yeah you're right it's uh well they also that's the saying we're doomed to repeat it if we don't learn from it so exactly, exactly. and a lot of kids these days don't realize how good they have it yeah no. we're spoiled <laughs> yes. yeah. definitely <laughs> did you have any one particular artist that uh or not artist author um that kind of you like to follow or you were inspired by um there there are like stories that i really like like i said i grew up being dyslexic it was a huge struggle for me for most of my life it was hard for me to under, to read a book and understand it because I was so focused on trying to make out what was being said that at the end I would read something and I'd be like, what did I just read? Um, but a lot of my uh, stories, you know, I got from watching watching things or I, I'm a huge storyteller fan. I love, you know, and there's so many books that I used to feel so sad as a child where you know, like Harry Potter, all these kids be like, oh, did you read this? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I wish I could have, you know, like, um, because like I'm a 90s baby. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, their audiobooks were kind of limited. It wasn't as prevalent as it is now. Um, I wish it was because then I would have dived into so much more. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I but there are i guess storytellers in different kind of forms like i said um the the uh, labyrinth and the dark crystal um there are certain stories and uh people that direct things that i'm like i admire and i did fall and i was like oh my gosh they're amazing because i believe it's still kind of like writing but in a different uh media 
Sure. Well, is it okay if I ask you about your dyslexia? I mean, yeah, go for it. So, it, were you, you were diagnosed as a child, but how did they come to find out? I mean, how, what made the a parent or a doctor say there's she's dyslexic? How, first off, how do you get diagnosed? So, dyslexia is is one of the, I guess, disabilities that uh, needs more research. You could say. Um, they're learning they, a lot more now and recognizing it a lot more now than they did when I was a child, to be honest. It was something they kind of were trying to learn about. Like, you couldn't really diagnose it when I was a child. Okay. Um, you, but I do remember being, young, like, being very little and they took me to a specialist or a doctor in, like, Edmonton. And they did, they can, this... Uh, university conducted all these um uh tests on me um to try to learn more about it um my parents didn't really realize what was going on until i was about probably in grade two or three um i remember trying to go through the alphabet and i would really struggle and my dad was like oh why you know he didn't understand what no one understood what was going on um, like I said, I grew up in a small community. I actually feel, felt a little traumatized from school because, like, grew up in a small community. And I remember standing up and they're, like, ha each of us taking turns reading out loud. And it would be my turn and I'd be, like, sweating bullets because I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't know, right? And then I'd be trying to, like, read out loud, but I couldn't. So I would go quiet. And I've had teachers smack me across the face just oh, in front of oh everybody. Gosh. And I felt so embarrassed and I felt so degraded. And I, you know, being little, you don't understand exactly. You just feel like you did something horribly wrong, but you didn't, you know, you didn't understand that really it wasn't your fault, you know? So like, it's really, it really, uh, things, situations like that, you know, growing up in the school or them calling me dumb or things like that, some of the teachers, it really uh, set me back in in mm. my progress with school right um it just freaked me out and it wasn't years later till i decided my husband convinced me he pep taught me into going back for a higher education because i was so scared because i had all these kind of not good memories and i was like but i'm a bad student and i don't think i can and you know but yeah i went back to school and i found out i wasn't a bad student i was actually a really good student more than i realized <laughs> Proved him wrong. Yeah. <laughs> what did your family think, you know, knowing you were dyslexic and then you're like, I, I wrote a book. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are surprised because, you know, I was kind of like growing up, I was kind of a closet writer. Like I love telling stories and stuff like that. My family knew my passion for, for storytelling, but none of like the outsiders or friends knew that much. Um, I feel like I was kind of underestimated. They're like, ha ha, sure, you know, you'll write a story. Because, <laughs> yeah, Land of the Dragon is a story I started when I was 12 and I've never let it go. And all my friends are like, why don't you just do a new story? You know, why don't you just let this be? Like, you've taken forever to do this story. And I'm like, well, I am not going to publish it until I'm satisfied, until it's mm -hmm. where I can feel comfortable and feel like, yes all my hard work is for something. It's at a spot that I know it's ready to be. It's um, a piece of right. you. Exactly. I took my time to really layer it, detail it. Uh, put, there's a lot of symbolism in there. Wanted to make sure all the research that I did and incorporated was correct and that it was presented in a way that that can really hit the audience because that's like the whole purpose is to really help inspire people or to make a change or to overcome maybe trauma in a safe environment. So that's really my purpose behind this book is really, I really hope to like touch other people's hearts. Like um, that's really the purpose of Land of the Dragon. Um, I have some other stories, you know, I develop to the side, but my main focus has been Land of the Dragon. The other stories are more for fun, you know, for a fun read, but this one is really to inspire people and to remind them 
of of the history and our past history and to point out patterns in society so we don't repeat those. Mm-hmm. It sounds like an amazing story. Thanks. Hopefully, hopefully people like it. It is an award-winning book. Um, That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, <laughs> wow. I read your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's won uh, two awards so far. I, it's been nominated for quite a bit awards, a lot that I uh, didn't expect. Um, so I'm still waiting to hear back of, about those ones. But um, it's been, uh, it's won a Literary Titans Award oh. um, in the gold category, which is awesome. <laughs> and then it won, in, and I hope I say this right, it's such a long name. International Impact Book Award or Impact International Book Award. I always get it backwards because my dyslexia. But yeah, um, it won an award there. Um, and then currently I just found out that it's been nominated for another award that I wasn't expecting. But that's the Whitney Award, I think it was. But yeah, so I'm waiting. Won't know until next year in January. But yeah. Wow, so, so congratulations. Really yeah. That's amazing. That's awesome. Thanks. Have you thought about writing a children's book on dyslexia to help kids kind of get through what you went through? I haven't thought about it, but I am starting to look at certain, there's special text you can incorporate in children's book that helps uh, dyslexic kids to read uh, it clear there's a special text for dyslexia so okay i'm thinking my next children's book of incorporating that text in there yes that would be neat when you say text do you mean a like a font or yeah like there's a special font uh that they've developed for dyslexia and it makes it easier like it doesn't take it away but it's easier for dyslexic uh, people to read. Huh. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. That's, I didn't even know. Do you what do you know what font it is? I can't remember the name of it, but I have seen it. <laughs> I have seen yeah. it before. It does help calm down the words, which is nice. Mm-hmm. I, another uh, tactic that dyslexic people use is they'll use different colored bookmarks. So they'll put different bookmarks that are kind of see-through, but they have a color. And it depends Mm -hmm. on your dyslexia because there's different types, but they put it on the the page and it calms down the words. Like mine, I use a blue, kind of a blue text and that helps, Mm -hmm. um, calms things down for me. There's other strategies, Mm -hmm. thank goodness, because like, that's what people are like, how do you do it? Because I write a book and I do journalism at, for a living. So all I do is write. Um, and it does take me longer than normal writers. Like I do. And I'm also very annoying to be around when I'm writing because I'm constantly like, Siri, how do you spell this? And then I'm getting angry at Siri because I'm like, I didn't say that. I said this. You know? So, <laughs> yeah, you'll hear me cursing at Siri. I'm like, I didn't say that yeah. word. You know, because I'm trying to write as fast as I can, but yes. I'm having a hard time because Siri's spelling the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, there's different tools, thank goodness, for technology. My computer reads things out loud to me. Uh, so does my phone. Um, I have tools to help with my my grammar as well. Um, also, yeah, Siri. I bug Siri a lot for spelling. <laughs> does she catch you back? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so does she catch you back? <laughs> uh, she says she won't respond to that. <laughs> I will not respond to that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm like just getting more angry at her. <laughs> I don't have time for this series. I love to just ask random things. It's so fun. <laughs> Uh, Amanda, you had talked just a little bit ago about different colored lenses and stuff. Had you yes. ever heard anything like this for? Um, no, but you know, I worked with a vision therapist 
uh, for several years when I first became an optician and we used different color lenses to help children focus and blue was the calming for like ADHD and then I would use a red lens because I have really bad migraines so the red takes away the UV light and you can use different color lenses for things like that for even you know your own things like ADHD and and migraines so, so it, it makes sense you know to use that blue to calm the words it's interesting about um dyslexia and it's funny because they don't call it i was informed um oh you asked a question i didn't even answer it but you said when i was officially diagnosed i wasn't officially diagnosed till like almost two years ago oh wow yeah wow. so they knew i had it and then when I got tested officially, they're like, oh, yeah, you have it very severe. Like, you're one of the most severe cases we've seen. So, wow. um, Thanks, Doc. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that makes me feel so much better. Um, <laughs> it was so much worse before, though. I feel like I've really come a long way where, like, I used to have maybe a reading level of like grade three because it was so bad, but. I read every single day. And when I read every single day uh, for an hour, it really combated it. It pushed me a lot higher, like to be uh, better with it. I just learned my own kind of tactics to calm myself down. And now it, it hardly bugs me, except when I'm nervous, then it really acts up. Like if I have to read something, out loud for a reading or for uh reporting then i'm like oh dang because <laughs> uh. <laughs> i'm like oh dear okay i have to calm my my nerves so i mm -hmm. usually i like to try to memorize it if i know that i'm having to do that because then i don't you know yeah doing it on the spot's <laughs> a little nerve-wracking do you wear prescription like do you have contacts or glasses you wear um, I don't really need glasses except okay. uh, more recently, if I'm tired, I guess um, one of my eyes is like d not as clear as the other when I'm tired. So everybody has one weaker eye than the other. I was going to say you could probably even get a pair of glasses that have tinted blue lenses oh, just for great. reading. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's a yeah. good idea. Actually, I never thought of that. But yeah, yeah, there's I've been diagnosed not that long ago officially. We always knew I had it, but I officially got it diagnosed not that long ago. Um, and I was going to answer another question that was said, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> the, We're full of questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, your story is great. And he really should probably be a spokesperson for that little girl that's in school now that you know, nobody understands what she's going through. You've walked right. it. You've been in her shoes. Well, yeah, I, I definitely learned that, like, no matter what is holding you back, because I, I know, like, for me, I have such a big passion for writing. I love it, but it's a weakness at the same time, right? Um, so I had to work extra hard, harder than other people and harder than other students to kind of get where I'm at. And there have been times where I'm like, it's so unfair. <laughs> I'm at such a disadvantage than everybody else, you know. Um, but it's it's worth it. And, you know, I think if you have a passion in something, even if it's a weakness, don't let don't let it hold you back. Just work really hard. If you're really serious, put in the practice, because the more you practice, uh, you know, the better the outcome will be. That's right. And don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do something. Because exactly. You know. Like I remember being a little girl and I was still working on Land of the Dragon. Someone, someone in my class kind of laughed at me and they're like, you know what? Our teacher wanted to publish a children's book and he couldn't. So what makes you think you can? And, you know, like, for me, I'm very stubborn and I feel like when someone pushes me, I go the opposite way just to spite yes. them a little bit. Yes. Good. So Good. that's why I was I like, it was a little bit thing. of motivation, right? It's like, <laughs> I'm going to show you. <laughs> yes. I weighed 97 pounds and my mom told me I couldn't be a wrestler. <laughs> I went to wrestling school anyway and proved her wrong. 
That's right. Yeah. See, <laughs> that's what you have to do. Prove them wrong. Exactly. Well, and plus, it sounds like you had some mean teachers. I thought I did. Holy yes. cow. My goodness. Right? Small, well, all I can say is small towns have big secrets sometimes. So yeah. there are stories for sure about the school system in my small town. It was a crazy, like, uh, not going too much into it, but we had a teacher that was punching students and throwing chairs at students. So wow. Oh, my gosh. It was crazy. You do that today and you're under the jail. I know. They couldn't get away with it now, but oh, back then, I'm surprised. I'm surprised she got away with it, but yeah. Yeah. Even then, I mean, you're a 90s kid. I'm surprised. Oh, yeah. It was, like I said, I grew up in a small town. Um, It was a retirement town, so a lot of the the beliefs were really... um, what what's the word I could use um outdated they're yeah. outdated yeah it's so, kind yeah, of and every, in a lot of small towns and you know like even in the school system like even if they know they done bad they all protect each other right so. in that small yeah. town yeah yep yep I live Maybe. in a small town I'm familiar <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. I'm the outcast. <laughs> yeah, the black sheep of the small town. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, I I feel you. I yeah, my family. <laughs> like, like I said, I'm half Spanish. My, my siblings. When I show people they're my siblings, they're like, no, because my brothers are completely <laughs> opposite. They have a beautiful, rich, darker tone than me. They have uh, black hair, brown eyes, and everybody's like, that's your brother? And I'm like, yeah. And then <laughs> so half my family were blonde with blue eyes, and the other half were like, uh, you know, beautiful melon color, and then, you know, brown eyes, dark hair. So, yeah, we're a very uh, mixed kind of race family going into a small town that's very uh, – I guess everybody's related to everybody, but we're not related to anyone. <laughs> so, right? Yeah, it was it was interesting. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, hey, you're in it, right? No. Yeah. It, I let's just say I I avoid that small town because I yeah. didn't. We didn't have the best experience growing up there. That's for sure. Kids yeah. are really mean, and you know, yeah. parents are very judgmental. Yeah. And it's in Canada? Yeah. And I live in Alberta. So. Okay. Bigger town now. Well, yeah. Well, I'm in a small city. (laughs) Yeah. I'm out of a small (laughs) town, but I'm in a small city now. There you go. (laughs) I feel blessed to have grown up in a much larger county. And so, yeah, I didn't have to go through. I'm still in my small town. (laughs) <laughs> well i mean once I, it was only five years ago i moved away from there with my husband but i was like i'm yeah. not putting my kids in the school like i can't okay. i was too scared i was like no i was scared oh my, my kids in school when they were old enough because of my experience i was like what if they get hit and we don't know and you know right but like i yeah. learned very quickly that things are very different than when i was a kid growing up and yeah the schools are are much more i guess uh in terms of teachers trying to hurt they're they're more um careful like they're not Mm -hmm. um it's not like before that's right right. they'll get arrested now exactly if they're caught (laughs) they'll get arrested yeah Yeah. And, and they should but, you know, yeah. and we all say that as we get older. Well, it's not like when I was a kid, you know. Yes. <laughs> I know. I feel like an old person or we're, right. know, the generations like, you know, the old people in the 90s. And I was like, oh, how dare you? <laughs> I like, I'm not old. You don't even know you what are, this is. <laughs> you were born in the 1900s. That's what my son says. <laughs> I'm like, you don't know the meaning of old children. <laughs> <laughs> what old is. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> your, your music is now classic rock. So, <laughs> and then, right. And then now I'm like quoting in my day, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's yucky. I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> Will you let, have they watched Labyrinth? It hurts my soul if I hear someone hasn't watched the la labyrinth. I'm like, we need to remedy that. You have yeah. to watch the labyrinth. Like you haven't yeah. lived until you watch the labyrinth. I even have a labyrinth magnet on my refrigerator. Like, yeah, I love with David Bowie. <laughs> yes, with the hair. Yeah, and and then they did a new on Netflix. They did that new series of the Dark Crystal, and they did a beautiful job. And then they shut it down, and I'm like, oh, "How dare you! You can't do this to us!" <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. So, are your kids the inspiration for your children's book? Um. Well, my inspiration. Yes and no. <laughs> well, I guess my inspiration is from experiencing, like, I don't know, being on the op the receiving end of the gossiping or the, uh, you know, people thinking in a group polarization way, you know. Um, yeah. I've been on the receiving end more times than I would have liked. But so I think feeling that I'm like, you know what, this is bad. We need to change this. Mm -hmm. We should start with the kids. We should do a story about that. It was during COVID. I really developed a stony gaze is what it's called. Um, and I, I actually, it's funny. I actually developed the, the book as an assignment in, in my post-secondary. So, and then my um, instructor was very supportive. She's like, this is amazing. Like, you should really think about getting this published. And then I actually did a play with a whole bunch of little, uh, younger with youth that did a play of a stony gaze um, during oh. COVID time. So, well, near the end of COVID time when things were starting to open up again, but we still mm -hmm. had like, you know, we were still had the cautions in place. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's so um, cool. <laughs> I have uh, well, one question to follow up: Is there any science that says that this is genetic, to where you you could pass it on, or your kids' kids, or? Mm -hmm. So, an uh, interesting thing about a uh, dyslexia. Oh, another thing is, I guess they don't call it dyslexia anymore. They call oh. it a reading and writing impairment. Or I'm like, oh, that's so silly. I'm just going to call it dyslexic. <laughs> just because. A lot more words. Yeah. <laughs> just use with words, you, more words. <laughs> and you can't actually be diagnosed by a doctor. You have to be diagnosed by a psychologist. Okay. So it's a special. See, I would have thought an eye doctor. Just, I mean, just not being trained, but. So you know. like they do a whole bunch of kind of psych. Uh, psych tests um, to mm -hmm. evaluate or conclude. And it's interesting because when I had it done, um, the doctor told me or the psychologist told me that um, dyslexia is a package deal, meaning if you have dyslexia, you don't just have dyslexia. You have ADHD or ADD. You have anxiety. You have a whole bunch of things. So it comes as a package. Like, oh, nice. So, like, I have ADHD, I have um, a reading impairment, writing impairment, and I had bad anxiety. So, that's a part, that's a whole package deal, right? Right. Um, and they said that uh, dyslexia is actually a sister disability to being on the spectrum, which I didn't know. I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. Sometimes yeah. when you have dyslexia, you're also on the spectrum. Um, it, but everybody's different. That's the interesting thing they're discovering. That's why I think they took it out of just category, categorizing it as dyslexia because um, it's built differently depending on the person. Some people, like I, my husband, it was interesting. My husband got tested too and found out that he has a form of dyslexia as well. So he has, um, I think it was a reading impairment. He has ADHD. Um, what else? Yeah, that's that's what he had. Like everybody's different. Some people have more than others. Like uh, some people that are dyslexia also are on the spectrum. 
So it's like it's a sister sickness to dyslexia being on the uh, spectrum, right? So, and they said if you have it, there's a 60% chance your kids can inherit it. Yeah, he mm-hmm. said between 40 to 60% your kids can get it. But because mm-hmm. I'm dyslexic and my husband's dyslexic, um, and I guess his mom, he didn't know, but his mom was like, oh, I'm dyslexic too. So he's like, I never knew that. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't until we were kind of tested that they were like, oh, so, yeah. So have you noticed it in your kids yet? Are they having I, trouble reading or anything? Well, my oldest is very, very clever. I was quite surprised. Like he, we put him on a reading program when he was just like a couple of months old and he's reading, he's eight, he's reading advanced chapter books. So he's a very mm-hmm. clever boy, but I have mm-hmm. noticed that he definitely has ADHD, but no problem with reading. Um, my second oldest, he is um, autistic. So we did notice that and he has ADHD. All our kids have ADHD. They're bouncing off the walls. <laughs> I'll have to get the blue lenses. <laughs> right. So, yeah, my little girl, she's only three, so I don't know yet. And then I just oh. had a baby, and my baby's a month. So I don't know. I don't know about the two youngest. Yeah. But oh. I think my oldest, he was he's a very smart, very smart, clever boy. Um, but he definitely has ADHD, but nothing else. My second one, you know. He has autism, um, and he's but he's very very clever with uh, math, which I'm not. <laughs> so, right. yeah, That's how my son and I are. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's amazing. He's well. The teachers say he's well above his years with his math. So I'm like, yay! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You, you okay. used a word there that I like. Uh, you said a sickness. And I like to I like to hear it described as that because that means there's some treatment. Well, that's what the that's what the um, psychologist called it. He said it was a sister sickness. That's how he referred to it. But for dyslexia, there's no pills or anything other than if you have ADHD. You know, for the reading and writing impairment, there's things to tools to try to combat it to make it easier. But there's no uh, so far, there's no big solution to take it away. Just, but he did like when he assessed me, he did write a letter of rec- recommendations for me. Like he recommend I take some uh, pills to help with the ADHD or uh, maybe with the anxiety a little bit. And then he recommends that I have a certain diet to help, which is interesting. Just like, certain things to help uh, combat it or um, uh, sometimes like um, he was saying not to drink any caffeine, which is interesting. Oh, yeah. I didn't do that. No That's caffeine. not possible. Right? <laughs> it's not possible. Everything works together. You know, everything has a reaction to this and everything is connected in our bodies. Exactly. So one thing leads to another that leads to this. So, it so all yeah, connects them. he can make certain recommendations, but there's, like I said, it's just your, your brain is actually wired differently. Like your, the way you view, view the world is differently. Like, I think there's even a show about dyslexic minds and it's kind of interesting. We just think differently. We tick differently. We're kind of out of the box thinkers and it, it's actually, it can be a gift. You know, if you know how to utilize it and learn how to how to work with it or utilize it in life, it can be a really it can be an advantage in some ways. Definitely. That's awesome. It's great to see what you've done, you know, becoming an author, you know, after all your struggles. It's just amazing. Thank you. You're kicking its butt. (laughs) Well, it's bittersweet. Sometimes bittersweet. Sweet. (laughs) Yeah, I, uh, I I don't know that I've ever had any problems like that. I've I mean I've been I'm slow, but that's a different thing. But as far as uh, a medical treatment, you know, I had never had thought about it. I guess there's no 
there's nothing they can do. I mean, you just kind of got to conquer it, you know? It's just, you know, I think we're all different, unique people. And um, it's, and, and that's what's hard with schooling for, for people that struggle with that because the way the school system is built is just for, uh, it's not um, flexible for those that are wired differently or see the world in a different way, you know? And, and that's the hard thing. I hope that in the future, you know, as we learn more that that can be remedied to help uh, those that have, uh, I guess they call it learning disabilities, but I don't know if it really is. It, you know, they even did, like, if you look at history too, it's funny because uh, those with ADHD and ADD, they found that it was actually uh, something that was kind of uh, an evolutional thing in humans. And it those that are like the hunter and gatherer kind of thing, it helped, uh, it was a revolutional thing for, or like something they developed in our genetic makeup that actually benefited the hunter and gatherers, specifically the gatherers. So mm -hmm. like, it would just make um, them gather more. And that's how, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm saying. In certain areas, it's actually a gift. It's actually something that humans have uh, developed more in t as time has progressed to help survive. So it's not like, it, we see it now as a disability because I think it's more the school system that might be at a disability because, you know, it, they've only developed one way to teach, but really yes. humans, we're all different. We have different genetic makeup and everything we're, we're built differently you know you can't you can't find someone the exact same as you um so i think it's really we just need to develop different learning methods for those that are different really yes yeah that way you don't fall behind exactly like, yes it's awful to put everyone in that box when it's a much larger box. The, that's the thing. It's it's real. That's why it's it can be hard. You know, like for me, I absolutely despise tests. And I don't know. I heard a rumor that they're getting rid of them in the U.S. because they don't actually the testing doesn't uh, accurately measure your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right. Like for me, yeah. I feel like I can show things a lot better and show what I've learned through work, through assignments, you know, mm -hmm. I can yeah. show my, my knowledge better that way than through a test that, you know, is just asking questions. Cause I guess in my mind, I, I overcomplicate it. I'm like, what do you specifically mean? Like, I feel like you're just mm -hmm. saying there's a box, but I want to know what's in the box. Like, Right. Like this question could be taken so many different lanes. And before I know it, I'm thinking of like elephants because like my train of thought <laughs> leads so far, goes so fast that right. I'm like, how did I even get on purple elephants? I don't know. <laughs> but originally I was thinking of this, you know. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm the person who tries to simplify everything. So when it told me to find X. I just circled the X and said, there it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just like you need it. If you want a certain answer, you need to be very specific with how you <laughs> word your question or else you're just going to get something wild. Yes. True. <laughs> so I'm funny. like, I don't know. And then I, I debate sometimes. I'm like, this was poorly worded. <laughs> I don't right. know. I, I'm terrible. I debate with my teachers and then they're like, okay, I, I can see your point. I can see how that was per poorly worded. And I'm like, yes. Ah, like, <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Like, this could mean so many things. You, you need to be very specific. I only run into that problem with like man teachers though. Cause like I said, I feel like men, men are good writers though especially with journalism because journalism is very mm -hmm. simple and to the point and it has d 
details but doesn't at the same time. It's not very detailed mm -hmm. or emotional, right? Any emotion in journalism is supposed to be through someone's statement, not through your own opinion. So mm -hmm. I feel like guys are very good at cut and dry writing like that. They're to the point, like there's the box where girls are like, but what's in the box? Like there needs to be so much more details. Like I feel, you know, but it can, can we decorate this box with glitter, please? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I only run into that problem with guys. I'm, I'm like, your your the way you worded it is just so simple that it's not mm -hmm. you know <laughs> it's not for a woman because it could this this question could go down so many different lanes like mm -hmm. when really it's just straightforward for other guys what type of journalism do you do um my beat i'm on maternity leave right now but my beat is homelessness and crime Oh. oh, wow. Okay. So I see so. a lot of sad things sometimes, you know, well, a lot of the time I see a lot of sad things um, and a lot of crazy scenarios that I'm like, oh my goodness, I feel like I'm on a reality TV show because this is absolutely insane what's happening. Yeah. I'm and a paramedic. Everywhere. I get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you're a paramedic. Yeah. So you've seen some crazy things too. Yeah, just one or two. Yeah. Yeah. In, Atlanta, in Atlanta. So yes, yes, I have. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, good on you. I don't think I could mentally handle what you do. Yeah, well, it, you have to drink a little bit, but <laughs> it all works out. Just a little. <laughs> it's, it's taken years of counseling to get past these things. So. Oh, yes. that's another thing about my book that kind of surprises me. Like, you know, the audience my target audience for my book is really anywhere from like, it's a young adult book. So anywhere from 16 to like 35 or something. Right. Or sometimes even the older people like it because it has a lot of historic information in there, you know? Um, but yeah. Um, I find it interesting because I'm, my writing is very detail and orientated. Right. But a lot of men really like the, the book. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting and surprising <laughs> that, that a lot of to men, read it. I think it's because of the war aspect. I think that's what it is. They're like, yeah, war. I don't know. Right. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> there's a lot of like, and there's even a little bit of romance in there as well. So I'm like, I'm just surprised. Mm -hmm. And uh, the book is written in first person perspective. So you only know what the character knows. Okay. But it's a little twist to it because it switches between three people, three perspectives. So it it takes you through the story in different perspectives. Nice. nice. Well, I can't we, wait. We, we, yeah, I need to find out. I, I got to get a copy from you. Um, I, I, we wouldn't be a paranormal show if we didn't ask you. Do you believe in the paranormal? <laughs> I do. I've had Ooh. experiences. Ah, what kind of spooky experiences have you had? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've I've had a lot to too many to count. I guess it's also uh in my culture um that we're really we really believe in the paranormal. Um there are some I guess encounters that I feel with uh spirits that I've encountered that have just made my hair stand on end like a quick one is I remember one time I was babysitting um, and I feel very sensitive to things, meaning like uh, I can feel when I feel like I'm not alone. I know when I'm not alone, I really feel energy. Like I know when someone's really angry or um, or even historically, I, I feel like sometimes we leave what's called an echo um, of, of energy, you know, um, but anyways, this one time I was babysitting and I hear the little girl that I was babysitting, I was cr making her lunch and she was downstairs playing in the playroom and I heard her scream like a blood curdling scream and I ran down there and I was like, what's wrong? And she's just bawling her eyes out. She would have been like probably three years old or around there. And then she, the, there's a corner in the room that's under renovation and she points to like the darkest area in the room. And she's like, that man's scaring me. 
And I look and there's like nothing there but darkness. And I'm like, okay, we're going to go upstairs now. <laughs> we're <laughs> upstairs. It was really, really like all my hair stood on end. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> or like even, it was interesting. This is crazy. But I was at a garage sale and this person took me aside because I was like, do you guys have any war things or like historical things? And the man took me to the side of the house because he didn't want to offend anybody. But he pulled out this bucket full of world, like Nazi things. Like he had a Nazi pin. He's like, this pin was taken off of a dead body, like what? from another soldier, like from a Nazi that was killed from a U.S. soldier took the pin off. And he placed it in my hand and right away it was like, I don't know, I kind of jumped just because I felt so much bad energy. And he was like, I'll sell it to you for like 40 bucks. And I'm like, I'm not taking this to my house. <laughs> There's like, something attached to this, to sir. House, you know? I was like, that's just bad jube jube, like bad energy, you know, like no thing. You have to you. like wrap it in sage and let sage burn I <laughs> all the energy. <laughs> no, there's definitely like, like I said, I think our energy is very, like energy can be very strong in people when people have bad intentions or dark intentions. And I feel like it can be left on things, you know? That's what I mean by like an echo. So that's what I call it. That's, that's a good word for it. Yeah. So have you ever seen a ghost? Um, not, I, I can't say that I've, Fully, I feel like I've seen good spirits, but not. Okay, well, uh, I don't like to talk about it very much because it was very dark, but I believe I have seen something in the past that was really, really, really bad. Like I, I person from what I've seen, I've kind of put together my own thoughts about, I guess, the other side. Like, I think, for example, when someone's doing something really bad um, or is not in a mentally good spot, I think there's a lot of, there's some bad things that influence that. And sometimes I feel like I can feel that there's, that person is being followed by something really bad that's trying to drag them down, you know? So I definitely think that sometimes things are attached to other people that we don't know about or some people get scared and don't want to acknowledge it or it's easier to put blame somewhere else or somewhere that makes more logical or scientific kind of uh sense but i do believe that you know that kind of spiritual thing goes along with science like even scientists have said that they notice when someone passes away their body is actually lighter. So I've heard that, yeah. Yeah. Well, how about this? Have you ever experienced anything like a Bigfoot? A Bigfoot? I do actually believe in Bigfoot. So good. good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't seen Bigfoot. Nope. <laughs> I hope not to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I don't know. I've I've run into some really interesting and weird situations. So I'm just like, oh, what's next? Like I've run into me and my family <laughs> ran into a bear. We almost got attacked by a bear. We were so what? lucky. Yeah, my husband. Well, we were just walking down this trail. My son stops, my oldest, and he just pauses and he's like backing up slowly, but not saying anything. And then my husband was like, oh, and then I look up ahead. I'm like, oh, no. And there's this big bear. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to die this way. This is an awful way to die, <laughs> especially when I feel like so vulnerable because I have all my kids with me. So we right. just turn around and we start to walk, but then the bear starts to charge. So we turn around again and then it slows down. And every time we turn our back, it's like charging. So I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, my goodness, what do we do? It's following mm -hmm. us. And my son... <laughs> my my middle son starts to run i'm like don't run don't run you're gonna make it yeah, like, they say you're not supposed to run yeah yeah like, is, like, is it black bear up there or is it grizzly it was, really? it was a grizzly oh my gosh so it was so bad and then my husband finally was like hey it's charging when we walk we need to stop and stand our ground so 
he stood in front of us. My husband's a big man. Like I'm only five one. I'm a tiny short girl and he's uh, six one. So he stood there and then he stood his ground and just stared at it. And it just stopped and stared at him. And he was pretty close to it. And then it stood up and I was like, oh no. <laughs> so then my husband raised his hands above, right? You look taller. And then the bear raised one of its paws up. <laughs> and I was like, oh dear. And it was a grizzly. It was a male for sure. And I think it was just a teenager because he was sizing my husband up, seeing like mm -hmm. my husband was like, just go take the kids. And I'm like, no, we're in a group. I feel like if I leave you, it's going to attack for sure, because right. I think we intimidate it in a group. But it kept looking past him like it wanted to get to me and the kids because I'm such a short person. I could blend in like my eight year olds almost as tall as me. So, mm -hmm. um. So I'm like, I'm not going to leave you because you're going to get attacked or something. So he he eventually just stared the bear down in the eyes. My husband was slightly taller than the bear, probably like an inch or two. And then the bear decided that it wasn't worth it. So then it went down and went um, out of the trail and just kind of ran off. Wow. So it was and then after the bear was leaving my husband i can see his legs trembling but he wasn't during when the bear was there i think that was the adrenaline right sure yeah so and that was our second bear counter so um my husband he's from australia and yeah he's, he's crocodile dundee man yeah and he's <laughs> like i don't know what you canadians think everybody's saying that australia is so dangerous and he's like you guys have it dangerous you have bears and mountain lions and and wolves and all this stuff he's like we just have, like we're safer than you guys you guys have the scary stuff not us right. <laughs> that's fantastic so. wow that's scary though that had to be terrifying oh it was it was so scary we're like oh we lived <laughs> you know we're like never again yeah oh, no kidding yeah. wow that's well, that's a great story. I mean, that, yeah, I would have freaked out. I mean, I'll be honest, yeah, with you. <laughs> you know, when uh, yeah, when we, I were, went, we were lucky, we were lucky we didn't take our dog with us. That would have totally, oh, yeah, we all were so close to taking our time. dog with us. That would yeah. have tantalized the bear. The bear definitely would attack because my. My dog is like my dog looks like a fox, but like it, it has so much fight in it, it would not have. We would have had to let the dog run loose or something, and I would have been so sad because <laughs> that's my dog. Yeah. Oh gosh. Hey, you know what they got to say? You, you've only got to run as fast as the guy behind you. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Push the other guy and run. <laughs> that's, that's it. Right. Uh, well, Stephanie, I've had a great visit with you. Um, tell yes. everybody where they can find you and uh, about your yeah. book, and where they can find it. Definitely. So I have a website. It's called, it's at uh, landofthedragon.ca because I'm in Canada and also because Calm was taken, sadly. So um, it's landofthedragon.ca. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Twitter, well, X, they call it. Um, and then my book can be found on Amazon. Um, it can also be found on Ingram Sparks, on Google Play, the digital copy. I don't know what it's called. It's like everywhere. My book is everywhere. Um, but yeah. Okay. Well, Amazing. We, will, we will put that in the uh, description afterwards. And then I will look you up you. on Facebook too. Uh, and is it available in Kindle form? Yeah, okay. it's available in Kindle. Well, ebook. Yeah, it's available hardcover, paper cover, and ebook. Okay, and your children's books out next month. August first, it'll be out on Amazon first, and Ingram Sparks. Okay. So, and that's available in paperback and hardcover. I don't have it on digital just because it is a children's book. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that's that's so cool. I'm glad you took the time (laughs) to come visit with us. Um, especially, uh, with the new book coming out, we didn't, I didn't know about that. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for letting me share. Hey, no, we're glad to. And uh, we keep in touch with Mickey all the time. So keep in touch with us. If you got something else coming up, let us know. We'd love to have you oh, back. Definitely. And if you run definitely. into Big I Foot Mario. A... Go Sorry, ahead. you were saying? No, I was just going to say if you run into have... Big Foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a kind of a paranormal book planned out, a series Ooh. that I want to do. So it's called The Reaper of Love. So. Ooh, oh yes i look okay. forward to that <laughs> yes, yes. well please promise us an exclusive with that because we love that kind of thing so perfect yeah well thank you so much for visiting <laughs> all right yes, stephanie have a wonderful you. evening we will talk to you soon thanks for thanks for hopping in with us thank you it was a pleasure all right bye-bye thank you good night bye. see ya night yeah bye that was great. Yes. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. Yeah. You know, I I didn't want to pry about the dyslexia, but I think it's important because I didn't know a lot of the things she was talking about. Mm-hmm. You know? So yeah. And, and to you know, conquer that and be an author. Oh my gosh. And a journalist. And a journalist. Yes. Wow. She's and she an amazing says. person. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need to find her on Facebook and help her with the blue lens. I think that would be great too. Oh, yes. Yes. I um I got her website pulled up so I can get all of her information. <laughs> Ooh, shoot me the link because I'll forget it when I go to type it in. Okay. <laughs> well you'll, do. Fill, you'll have to fill in for Shay tonight because I'll forget all these little details and they'll be like two weeks from now going. Weren't you supposed to put that in there? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I did. <laughs> so <laughs> you, have to, you have to help for Cheyenne. And for anybody that's curious, Cheyenne has got a cold or something. I, don't, I think she's playing hooky. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have a great show tomorrow night, too. It's going to be a late show, probably coming on at about 10, 15-ish. So get your energy drink ready. We're going to be up for a while. It's a big brother. We've already missed the first hour. So I'm going to go watch yeah. it. Right now, so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we'll be doing that tomorrow night. And then Friday, I am looking for guests for the grinning guardian. So I'll have to see how that works out. <laughs> My guest has had some things come up with work and he can't make it. So We'll find okay. somebody else. And then uh, Saturday, the Misfits, I think you and uh, Cheyenne are going to throw tarot cards at me or something. <laughs> you, should, you know, just hit me. You should invite Shay. Oh, yeah. I'll have to get her to join us for the Misfits if she's available Saturday. Yeah, I think that would probably be up yeah. around. I know nothing about tarot cards. I'm going to be the one sitting in the corner going, uh-huh, uh-huh. You pulled the <laughs> best card on me. Got it. Check. There's a plane crashing in my house. Got it. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so. <laughs> It'll be fine, Glenn. It, we're, it's I'm all good. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. All right. Well, let's wrap this up because we are hitting our two-hour time mark. Uh yeah. Amanda, I'm so glad you've joined us. I'm so glad you're going to be a part of my paranormal team. So you can help keep me out of me trouble. I seem to, I seem <laughs> I'll to, do my best. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be easy, I promise you. <laughs> so, uh, I seem it follows me. So it's <laughs> it's a it's a sick trait. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to the Big Brother show. I will be on the Thin Line Rock Station tomorrow from noon to 1400. That's two o'clock for you civilians. Uh, Eastern time, and then Friday night from 6 p.m. to 11. Don't ask me the military time. I done forgot that. Uh, on the Thin Line Rock Station doing fl- Friday night flashbacks. And then we've got the Green and Guardian show 9 p.m. on Friday, and I don't know who the guest is. Next week, uh, who do we got next week? Let me look. I don't remember. I'm horrible <laughs> with these things. Next week we have, uh, we've only got one guest scheduled and he is an author uh, as well. So looking forward to that. So until 
until we see you tomorrow for the big, big bigfoot big brother show <laughs> <laughs> good lord we will see you then <laughs> bye good lord